What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So today was one of those days when we did get uh, the market starting to sort of consolidate sideways and fade out a little bit of that momentum from what we have seen over the last week and a half with the very, very strong rally on the back of dropping yields. We did have retail sales and we did also have the PPI numbers, the producer press index also coming out. Uh, today I'm going to break those down and I'm also going to talk a little bit about how NVIDIA may be coming under a little bit of pressure with Microsoft launching its new custom AI chip as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like. I would really appreciate it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. There is a 16% annual discount that's available till the end of this month. And we've got a couple more spots left if you are interested in joining. So PPI, which is the producer price index, uh, came in well, well below consensus here. So month over month, we saw prices going down by 0.5%. Year over year, we're now sitting at 1.3, which is significantly lower than the Fed's target. And core with no change and now sitting at 2.4% on a year over year basis on X food and energy basis here. And X food, energy and trade services, we only increased by 0.1% with year over year now sitting at 29 as well. So again, these are just kind of reaffirming what we have already learned with CPI yesterday with numbers coming in softer than what the expectations were. And uh, again, this is, uh, you know, well received in the markets because it is suggesting that inflation is indeed coming down on the back of higher interest rates while also the economy is saying staying super, uh, super strong. Uh, this right here was the retail sales uh, coming in a little bit softer again so month over month we declined by 0.1 percent but x vehicles we were up 0.1 percent with x vehicle and gas also up 0.1 percent as well so retail sales continues to be somewhat decent and moderately positive uh, while inflation numbers continue to pull back and that's exactly one of the reasons why the markets are so optimistic with the idea that there is a possibility of a soft landing in the economy so dow jones here pushing up over 163 points so continuing on that momentum from last couple days uh, nasdaq was flat s p was very very flat we did see a lot of volatility here so we did see a drop we were red at one point during the day and then we pushed right back up to close basically flat on the day with about a perfect split almost with a little bit of uh, you know majority here in the number of stocks pushing higher. So 3,300 companies were up on the day advancing and about 2,500 were declining on the day. So the market thinks the Fed is going to start cutting rates aggressively. Investors could be in for a letdown uh, as well. And that's the thing, right? I mean, markets are pricing in full rate cuts starting in May for 2024 and this could lead or open us up to a big repricing risk in case there is any discrepancy with what the Federal Reserve ends up actually saying or doing versus what the market's pricing in. Um, and that's a discrepancy that's lasted most of the last year in 2023 and even somewhat in 2022. We've continued to see those discrepancies between what the market's pricing in versus what the Federal Reserve is telling us that they're going to do or is even doing. So I think that December uh, SEP, the FOMC meeting in December, which is less than a month away, I think is going to be very, very important because we're also going to get the summary of economic projections, which is going to show us what interest rates, unemployment, inflation and GDP expectations look like from the Federal Reserve over the next several years out. Right. So not only 2024, but 2025, 2026 and longer run targets uh, as well. Um, and that's going to once again kind of um, put us on the same page, per se. Market's still going to price whatever it wants to price in, but it's going to start to kind of get a little bit more aligned as time goes on. And we'll find out whether the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell, are they just talking tough or are they really going to, you know, focus on this fight of fight on inflation and continue to raise rates further. By the way, these right here are all the benefits. Again, if you want to join our Patreon Discord, link's going to be in the description and in the pinned comment. You can unlock over 20 plus Discord channels, uh, sending out alerts every single day on these channels here and market discussions, uh, access to all the spreadsheets, which I think are going to be super valuable and helpful for everyone with respect to volatility, S&P 500 intrinsic values. Everything's going to be included as well as the 40 plus private videos and tutorials as well. So link's going to be down below. And again, we'd love to have you on board. So my Microsoft announces custom AI chip that could compete with NVIDIA. So Microsoft is introducing its first chip for artificial intelligence, along with an ARM-based chip for general purpose computing jobs. And both will come to Microsoft's Azure cloud. And Microsoft said that its uh, Ignite conference is in Seattle. And the uh, Graviton ARM chip that cloud leader Amazon Web Services introduced five years ago has gained broad adoption as well. So here's my, here's my take on all of this. When you've got, Jesus, my hair, 
when you've got a very, very high return on capital market, when you've got an industry, a sector, a product that has a very high profitability, very high margins, very high return on capital, what do you think ends up happening eventually? Competition. Competition ends up coming. It's just it's this nature of the business, right? Simple analogy I can give you is that let's say that you are in a town and somebody's running a lemonade stand and they're making a lot of profit. They're making a lot of money by selling lemonade in that town. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, maybe I can do that too. I can start a lemonade stand. And if, the, if that person's making a lot of money, I just need to get a little bit of market share and I'm good. And that's how competition comes in. Of course, you have to be a little bit more creative. That's a very simple analogy. But the bottom line is, and that's also what's been talked about in the little book that beats the market by Joel Greenblatt. He talks about when there is high returns of capital and high profitability and high margins, eventually they will be driven down to an equilibrium because of competition entering the space. And with Microsoft, with Apple, with uh, Amazon, with all these big tech companies now entering this space because of the potential they see in artificial intelligence chips, um, is uh, is going to create a very interesting dynamic around this industry and the margins and the competition. NVIDIA sure has a lot of lead. I mean, that's what they specialize in, right? Microsoft's not in the business of making chips. Apple's not in the business of making chips. NVIDIA is. So they are an expert. They are special in this particular industry and sector. But in five years or 10 years from now, if there's anybody who can compete with NVIDIA, it is likes of Microsoft, it is likes of Apple, it is likes of Amazon, these big tech companies with unlimited amount of resources to to put time, effort, energy, and people into this to to capitalize whatever market share they can in this uh, in this ever growing industry that we're seeing in artificial intelligence and chips and semiconductors. So that's something to keep in mind, right? So we've talked about how no company is ever immune to any market circumstances, right? That's something to always be aware of that you're constantly rechecking stories for different companies. You have to be on, you know, a little bit more active participation uh, when it comes to quarterly earnings and earnings calls and listening to what the companies are talking about and saying about their business because the moment you kind of slip up, the moment, you know, it starts to kind of go away, right? Uh, in terms of that edge and in terms of that expertise in that particular stock or company. So, you know, no company is ever going to be immune to every market circumstance. And it's a constant evaluation because the world is ever changing. Um, this right here is the heat map. So NVIDIA, Amazon, Oracle, Adobe starting to pull back a little bit. Eli Lilly was lower. Meta was down. Microsoft was flat. Apple was slightly higher. Tesla continuing on this momentum up over 2.2%. Netflix and Disney also uh, rallying uh, quite a bit here. So a little bit of a mixed day for the market. So we did have comm services push higher. So this was a uh, on the back of like Netflix and Disney and Google pushing higher, uh, consumer defensive financial cyclicals also pushing up in the last one week. We've got most sectors obviously pushing up because of how strong we've seen the markets to be. And over the last one month, healthcare and energy on the only two sectors that are struggling. But on days like today, orange juice comes for the rescue, orange juice for the win. Highest uh, gainer here on the day, up 2.76% along with coffee prices. Um, and we did have palladium and lean hogs selling off incredibly uh, on the day today. So coming over to crude oil, a uh, little bit of a sell-off here, continuing on that momentum lower and now sitting at just over $76 a barrel. Next support level is going to be inside this green rectangle, sitting roughly at $72, $73 a barrel for, for crude. And uh, right now going over to uh, the market breadth indicator, you can see that we are now sitting at over 87 88% for this index. Yesterday, we were at 27% higher. I mentioned that I wouldn't be surprised if we are at over 80% and we were, we closed at over 84% and today we're up another 4% uh, to over 87% for this index. So we're certainly getting from a market breadth standpoint, a uh, little bit more on the overbought side. You can see that this right here, uh, trading above their 50 day moving average now sitting at 68%. Um, and then this right here with a uh, the 200 SMA, we're now sitting at over 44%. So still majority of the market, over 50% of stocks are still trading below their 200 SMA. But we have certainly seen a lot of momentum in the last couple of days with a lot of these indexes and in indices basically pushing higher with market breadth suggesting that, okay, there is some broad participation, but at the same time, we're getting overbought um, as we're going higher. So risk is just a simple component um, that, that can be valued with price. That's it, right? When price goes up, risk goes up with it. It's as simple that, as that. And when prices go down, risk goes down. And you can see the RSI right now in the MACD and the price itself where we are sitting at 4,500. 
that is literally the next resistance uh, for S&P. So kind of like in this red arrow that I've pointed out for the S&P is the resistance. And right now we are, of course, a bit more on the overextended overbought side. Uh, same thing with the Nasdaq here. Uh, you can see that, you know, RSI, MACD here, a little bit over uh, 68. So we are certainly getting up there uh, with the price itself sitting at over just over 14,100. Uh, in fact, we are uh, we are kind of in line with this resistance right now. So this is exactly where we got rejected uh, in the past. And that's really where we are. Very, very nice higher high. So no doubt about it. So we are uh, you know starting to make a very nice potential uptrend and we're changing that direction for the Nasdaq. But what we need to see now is a, is a higher low. We need to see a potential higher low form uh, for the Nasdaq before we can confidently be uh, understanding of the idea that, okay, this is indeed going to be a shift in the overall direction for the price action. And it's possible that we start making, uh, you know, new higher highs, higher lows, and potentially make our way back up to all time highs. So that's really where we are. Resistance 14,100 all the way up to 14,400. That's going to be that next level to watch for, uh, for NASDAQ. Talking about um, Apple here. And Apple on the day also pushing higher very nicely, but coming up to that resistance at 190. Uh, RSI MACD also overbought here. So that is going to be that resistance level uh, to watch uh, for, for Apple. And support level is going to stay put around 179, close to $180 per share. Uh, talking about Amazon, so you can see Amazon already starting to pull back. Not a surprise, down over 1.7%. So you can see the leveling off uh, in the RSI and the MACD against the, the market technicals, uh, suggesting maybe there's a pullback in place here. And support level next is going to be sitting roughly at 135, 136 for Amazon. That's going to be the level to pay attention to for this company. Uh, Tesla here, on the other hand, continues to make a move back higher. So we are approaching that lower high. Uh, this right here is going to be that lower high to watch. That's going to be sitting roughly at around $252, to $250 per share. This is still very much in the context of this downtrend and this lower high and lower low pattern with a massive amount of supply sitting roughly in the $280 to as much as $303 per share. So that's really where we are with a lot of consolidation for, for Tesla. And right now we're very much in the context of this downtrend of lower highs and lower lows. Uh, talking about Nvidia here, uh, again, you can see they were approaching that resistance uh, inside this red rectangle, uh, you know, sold off a little bit here on the day. RSI MACD also showing signs of very overbought, overextended levels. So wouldn't be surprised if we do see a bit of a pullback here. Our next support really is going to be low 400s um, to watch for Nvidia moving forward. So that right there is going to be the range within which it's been trading. So lots of consolidation and uh, uh, pretty much in that range bound pattern at the moment. Uh, talking about advanced micro devices, also starting to pull back, not a surprise, down over one and a half percent, RSI MACD leveling off, starting to see a bit of a pullback here. Uh, and that's exactly where, you know, where, where I could see AMD end up in the 112s. 112s and 115s uh, is going to be that next support level to watch for advanced micro devices with a resistance sitting put at 121 for this company. Talking about PayPal and PayPal here on the day, surprisingly continuing on that momentum. Very, very strong day for PayPal, 2.77%. So we've finally got uh, a new support on our hands at $56, $57. And the next resistance is going to be $65 per share for PayPal. So that's going to be that next target. Support level is going to stay put at 56, 56 bucks for this company. Uh, Visa here on the other hand continues to see some of that momentum. Support level getting valid at 245 it's kind of crazy. Low for the day, 245.34. And this right here is the support level that we have marked uh, on Visa. And the next target and resistance is going to be at $250. So that right there is going to be that resistance and that target to watch for, for Visa. Um, talking a little bit about Meta platforms and Meta here on the day starting to pull back a little bit, down 1%. And this is going to be the huge support uh, for Meta moving forward and right now obviously it's making some higher highs that's uh, that's actually very good so this right here is the higher highs uh, that meta is possibly making so we have to keep in mind uh, of course where that next higher low ends up being but overall very nice price action from meta um, still up very much and very handsomely on a year-to-day basis support level is going to stay put roughly around 315 to as much as 330 dollars for this company uh, Netflix here, on the other hand, uh, up almost 3% with a very nice, decent breakout. Volume was also quite reasonable at over 5 million shares traded. And the next resistance is going to be all the way up here at 485 for a Netflix. I will, again, point out to the to the fact that the RSI MACD very, very overbought here. And, uh, uh, and given the overextension and the uh, unfavorable risk reward from alongside, uh, I'd be just very careful with Netflix here. 
uh, even though the next target, next resistance is going to be 485, but the marginal upside is significantly less compared to the marginal downside that the stock carries at the moment. So keep that in mind. Google here, on the other hand, um, also pushing up over 70 basis points. Next target and resistance that we have for Google it's going to be all the way up to this level here inside this red rectangle sitting 139, 140, 144. Some of those levels to watch for <clears throat> Google uh, moving forward. Finally, we got Microsoft. Microsoft is, again, the one that kind of scares me the most considering that we are spending way too much time here in this overbought, overextended area. Um, and then, of course, support level is going to stay put at 366 for, uh, for Microsoft. So this right here is going to be that intermediate support all the way down to 340. Uh, is also a possibility for Microsoft, um, you know, moving forward. Uh, and then last but not least, we got Costco and Enphase. And Costco here uh, on the day pushing up to almost $600. So very, very nice move to the upside, up another 1%. And uh, almost getting up to that all-time high. So next target and resistance is going to be 603 Although just be mindful of where we are in terms of the technicals and the overall um you know, RSI and MACD here, and not to mention the price action itself approaching that level of resistance um, at the moment. And finally, we got Enphase, and Enphase here with a very decent day. It was higher, it was much higher uh, during the day, but of course getting sold off uh, intraday, but just over 1.5% green. This right here is going to be that support level to watch for Enphase uh, moving forward with a resistance and target up to $108. Okay, so for everyone who has stayed up until this point in the video, I want to go over the bond market, which I think is going to be probably the most useful information that I've kept towards the end because um, because of all of you guys kind of staying all the way till here. So I really appreciate you guys. Uh, so let's talk about the bond market and the yield curves. Uh, now, in terms of yield curves, we've, we've learned, you know, when the uninversion basically starts happening is when the potential for recession is the highest. It's not really when the yield curve inverts that re recession happens. It's when it starts to uninvert is when the recession takes place. And what we are witnessing right now is that the short end of the curve is kind of holding up really, really well. And what I mean by that is that if you come over to, let's say, a three-month bond yield, uh, the price action itself, you can see the yield has been flat. It's not really going anywhere. Uh, it's at 5.455%, so 5.45%. So this, again, is incredibly high. You can see that where we have been over the last you know, since June of 23, like well over three to four months, we've literally just been here. If you take a look at zero... Uh, US 01 MY, which is the one month bond yield, even worse, it has not moved at all. So this is literally about as flat as it gets. And again, sitting at just over 5.4%. So I think the reason why, you know, as markets go higher and higher, why the risk also increases and why it's going to be more and more challenging to continue to see that momentum is because of yields. Okay. And I know that, you know, right now there's a lot of recency bias. There's a lot of technicals suggesting that, oh, markets are going to keep going higher because we've been seeing that over the last couple of weeks and everyone's going to be very optimistic and bullish. But from both a technical and a fundamental standpoint, um, I think we need to be aware of what is going on uh, in terms of the market itself. So if you think about the one month yield here, 5.429% uh, on an annualized basis is higher than what the earnings yield is on the S&P 500. Earnings yield is simply the P multiple in, so one divided by the P multiple. So one divided by 20 is 5%. 20 is the price earnings multiple for the S&P. So 5% is lower than what the one year, one month treasury bond is giving investors. So in that sense, um, you know, it, it becomes a little bit less favorable as valuations go higher. So for example, in a, in a couple of weeks from now, let's say the valuation jumps to 21 or 22 times earnings. Now we're looking at one divided by 22 at 4.5%. So that's even lower than where the one month yield is sitting at, right? That's going to be full 100 basis points negative in the equity risk premium. So that becomes a little bit of a challenging environment for equities to rally further and further. In a low interest rate environment, it makes all the sense for, for equities to go higher because it's more favorable. You know, it, it, investors are taking on more risks to make more uh, returns. And that makes a lot of sense because investors are not getting anything on the bond market, right? And it's unless that short end of the curve starts dropping, um, it's going to be more challenging for equities to see that momentum beyond a certain point, right? And I'm talking 21, 22 times earnings. Beyond those levels, it's going to be more and more difficult, challenging for equities to see that upside if the yields continue to stay as high as they are. And that, again, comes down to the shorter end of the curve, more specifically than longer end of the curve, because longer end of the curve, which is one year and out, five year, seven year, 10 year, 2030, has more price volatility and term premium baked into the equation than there is in the one month. Like one month's not going to move all that much. Like you've already seen, one month has not 
not moved in so many months, right? So investors can roll these treasuries every single month and continue to make 5.4% on an annualized basis. So until until the one month rolls over down to, let's say, sub four or sub four and a half, um, I think, in my opinion, it's going to be a bit more challenging for us to see more continued upside uh, on an equity basis. The moment it starts to roll over, and I mentioned this in the Discord as well, the 10 year treasuries need to drop below 4% uh, in order for us to see more. Uh, more upside for equities and right now we're already on our way down but that four percent is a big threshold to watch for for 10-year treasury so that's what i wanted to go over in this video as well hope you guys enjoy this video and a complete update on the markets make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel link to our discord and patreon is going to be down below we'd love to have you on board 16 percent annual discount that's available till the end of this month and as always happy investing i'll see you all in the next video